Hi Pisces, welcome to this reading. This is for Pisces Sun, Moon and Rising Signs. Um, you might find it resonates more though if Pisces is your Moon or Rising Sign. Two of Wands reversed, wanting to take a leap of faith but you know not wanting to rush looking around thinking okay am i truly ready have i considered everything that needs to be considered i think this is someone who actually after a period of time is getting ready to take action and i feel like there are other people involved some of you it's a family some you know it could be community <clears throat> and this is someone who's sneaking out on that situation to communicate with you to contact you so some of you might be sick of that and you're saying i'm not i'm not a secret you know don't come and sneak towards me but i'm seeing that's what's happening they're feeling like i want to talk to you I don't want to wait any longer so I'm gonna have to do it quietly now it doesn't have to be that they're making you feel like a third party necessarily it could be that for let's say circumstances let's say you work together and it's not really the dumb thing that you date each other or something like that they're saying we have to for now move this forward in secrecy a little bit but this is someone <clears throat> who's saying I have to come towards you for my own self-preservation it is time and I might upset people you know, um, I might be going slightly against the boundaries or morals I've set for myself, but I need to do this now. They might also be motivated because, yeah, they've been watching you and they think that you're actually going to take a leap of faith away from them to something else. You've got, you know, maybe like me, maybe everything feels like it's um, changing around you right now and not necessarily for the bad. You know, things might be opening up. There are opportunities coming in and you're considering, OK, maybe I'm going to go for it. And this is making them panic because they're thinking, well, what does that mean for me? Are you going to forget me? Are you going to maybe literally move away? Okay, yes, Ace of Pentacles reversed. This is someone who knows there's an opportunity. They know they're going to miss it if they don't do something, but they're also saying, well, I don't want to shoot my shot and ruin it because I didn't plan, I didn't prepare. I also feel for some of you there has been a missed opportunity in the past. Why? Because specifically your person was struggling between you and someone else, your situation and another situation. Um, and you may even have removed yourself, pulled yourself back a little bit. I'm looking at his mustard coloured tights for some reason. Um, so what would that be? The solar plexus? Could be. That's not really the message I'm feeling from this though. So I don't know if, you know, let me know if that means something to you. Something around the colour yellow, particularly this mustard yellow. It could literally be someone was wearing like a mustard yellow cardigan or something like that. Um, and that's a confirmation, but that, yeah, that's what I'm drawn to today. It's almost like he's wearing a bodysuit because I can see yellow around the collar as well. I wonder if this person's saying they were, they have felt in the past far more restricted than it seemed on the surface, far less able to make the moves they wanted to make, even if on the surface with this green tunic that's kind of loose fitting, it seemed like they could follow their heart. Okay, look at this, you see, Eight of Pentacles. With you, it's like delays, I've been thinking, I'm partly delaying because it's an awkward situation, the other side of it is I'm delaying because I don't want to mess this up, but then you're watching them being industrious with something else that objectively seems very, very happy. But my question is, if it's so happy, why are they sneaking away from it? You know, what's actually going on behind the scenes um, that they're not showing? So let's have a look and see. What's going on with the Seven of Swords? Ten of Cups, please. Oh, also just to say, if you haven't voted on the next set of Zodiac readings, I have a poll up. Last I checked, um, Twin Flames were in the lead, but let me know your thoughts. Okay, the Moon. Exactly. Things are not as they seem. Somewhat, well, not someone, your person here is hiding something. Whatever, whoever else, even if it's not something romantic, whatever else they've got going on in life, it's not happy sunshine and rainbows as we can see here. Um, we have Pisces energy showing up here. <clears throat> so, I mean, you probably know, you probably, you know, you don't need me to tell you this. You know everything is not as it seems. Some of you I'm hearing your person has even communicated this to you. So you waited, you thought, right, well, they're going to leave, surely, and they didn't. So let's have a look. I do feel this is a return, it's a coming back towards you. What have they got planned here? Thoughts and feelings, please. Ooh, High Priestess revealing themselves. The Fall in Reverse, Aries, Aquarius, Seven of Wands. For some of you, they might come in, they might say something, and you're thinking, um, okay, <laughs> this is funny. I had a phone call over the weekend. Someone phoned me, in fact, if you listen to the intro, you know, to tell me about an engagement, um, and said, they got through to my voicemail and said, I'll update you when you phone back. So I was like, okay, um, phone back. 
and you know did a bit of hi how are you great yeah you great and uh, you kind of well I assumed at some point he's going to tell me you know like I'm engaged I've proposed um no <laughs> just silence and I'm thinking you phoned me you've got the update what what's your update so I had to sort of nudge and be like so is everything okay that's what I'm feeling here it's like this person's gonna reach out to you say something and you're like okay did you really just text me did you really just phone me to say hello is there why hello and what you know um i think there might be some yeah look at this you see the lovers in reverse this is what they want to talk about we've got gemini energy here also with the, the communication aspect of gemini mercury this person could be tongue-tied they might not know how to bring this up but there is so much more they're wanting to do and say um so if it seems a bit ridiculous that they've reached out and all they're saying is um Oh, did you hear that it's going to rain tomorrow? You're right, it, there's more to it than that. But this is someone who struggles to open up um, in terms of their feelings here. Maybe I'm hearing not necessarily with anger or passion, but when it comes to like romance, yes, that's something they don't like. And look, oh my goodness, okay, see, look at this. It's the same guy. Look at his tunic, the green tunic with the yellow top underneath, but look at his tights. His tights are what have changed or what has changed rather and we've gone from the yellow to the red to passion to grounding to the root chakra to actually bringing this through and we have the number seven two sevens here so they've been very introspective okay yeah this is someone who's saying i want to move this forward now i want to ground this i want to see this blossom in 3d reality but they are struggling to actually get the words out okay wow so for some of you they will message you and um, you're going to have to push a little bit or, you know, maybe give them a nudge. For others of you, they're just watching you right now and this is what they're thinking. We have Temperance reversed, Sagittarius. So there could be something to heal. Wow. If there is, they really want to. We've got that Two of Cups again. Two of Pentacles reversed. So they've decided it's you. You are their North Star. They're trying to get to you with the Chariot. They're focused, determined. Again, I see the Chariot as almost like the 3D manifestation of the Magician. You know, this is when we're saying, I have a dream. Now I'm taking action to ground this, to bring this into the 3D. We have Cancer here. I can also see the Tower peeking out. So Scorpio energy, but your person could be saying, in order to come to you in my Chariot and for us to have this happiness with the Sun, Leo, um, with, with it reversed, you know, the happiness we both know has been here that we haven't been able to fully embody, I'm going to have to bring in a tower. That's, that's why this isn't happening overnight. That's why it hasn't happened already. Okay, so let's get into the channel messages. So how I'm going to do this, I mean, let's just do it together. So I'm going to have three um Files, options, I'm just going to pull two cards from each and from that I'm going to channel through a message for you from your person. So you can choose based on which number you like, which number you're seeing most often, just which one resonates with you today, one, two or three, or you can just look at the options once I get them on the table. Okay, for pile one, I'm hearing something about cherries, you know specifically those glazed cherries that you get on puddings and things like that like a Bakewell tart. Oh, pile two has three cards, fair enough. Pile three, three again, okay. So here we go, they all look the same, but um, pile one, two, and three. If you want to think about it, pause, of course, please do. Otherwise, um, let's get into this. Okay, so pile one. Oh. <laughs> Pile one, this is very similar to what just came out, but you know, we'll go for it. We'll see if anything new comes through. We've got the chariot, so a bit of cancer energy there, if that's relevant, and we have the two of wands. Okay, let's see. Channeled message for you from a person. Okay, you are my light in the sky. You are my guiding light, the light at the end of the tunnel, and I don't care if that sounds cheesy because I've been through a very difficult time, and honestly, thinking of you and watching you and admiring you and taking inspiration from you has been the only thing that's made me get up every day and keep moving forward. Even though it seems like I've been investing in a practical sense in other areas, giving to other people, um, you've been in my mind, you've been the source of inspiration. And as I'm saying this, just as a side note, I feel very uncomfortable, like a prickling over my arms. So that might kind of annoy you, you know, that they've been taking inspiration from this and channeling it elsewhere. Anyway, back to this. 
I'm in a much better place right now and I think you would be proud of some of the things I've done. I feel that I have much more self-respect, my self-esteem is higher. Um, I feel like when people ask me, you know, what is it you do? How do you spend your time? Um, what things do you enjoy? Uh, I have something to talk about, whether it's work, a hobby, an interest um, that I think is valuable. Um, that's helping me to build up my communication skills and I, I'm, I feel like I'm practicing all of these things so that when I come to you we can have a really good conversation because I feel like you're really interesting, you can hold a good conversation about many different topics and I want to keep up. Um, There are people around me, there are other people around me, and I do have opportunities and options. I could go left, I could go right, I could spend my time with this person or that person, I could go down this path or the other. Um, but right now I'm thinking, I'm asking myself, how can I go down the path that leads towards you? And while I'm talking to these people, and I have to be honest, I'm not being honest with them. I might be letting them believe certain things or that I'm, I'm making moves towards them or that I'm considering something they've offered me, but I'm not. It's you I'm focused on. I could literally be looking someone dead in the eye, but I'm not seeing them. I'm, I'm not even really thinking about them. And I'm kind of a secretive person, actually. So you might not know my plans exactly. You might not know how much you're on my mind other people certainly don't but there's an absolute determination here um, that, that's driving me forward that's pushing me I want to rebirth I want to ground this I want to communicate with you sometimes I think maybe I'm more comfortable communicating um, through writing whether it's writing a letter an email a text message but I understand that to get beyond where we are we've got to talk probably face to face and I am building up um, my courage at this time I'm also someone who struggles um, between my shadow side and my light side and to be honest before we met I never really divided aspects of myself up like that. I was sort of, uh, I just felt like I was a sack of different things, emotions, I felt like I was a bit of, um, I was full of contrasts and I could never find happiness and people could never find happiness or stability with me because if they got on with one aspect of me, they didn't get on with another. If I was satisfied in one way, I was feeling empty in another. Um, however, since meeting you, through this connection, through thinking about things, even looking things up, I'm starting to understand myself more and to be able to integrate all of these sides of myself and to understand better what I need so I can pass that on to you and to understand how my moods are shifting and changing so I don't turn on a dime and confuse you and take things out on you and, and this connection. Okay, so for pile one, there we go. That was your message from your person. Okay, <sighs> pile two, let's see. Oof, the devil. Wow, we've got some Capricorn energy here. Oh my goodness, and we've got the Emperor Aries. Wow, pile two. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is some serious, strong, intense energy. This could be someone you look at as being your divine masculine or just in their divine masculine energy, but it looks a bit maybe too much, you know, too much in the divine masculine at the expense of some divine feminine energy. Anyway, okay, so channel message. I'm doing a lot of reflecting and looking back at the past and I'm fully aware of how I've, I've shown up in ways that have been very unhelpful and unhealthy for you, for me, for this connection. Um, I have some serious need to control. I like to control myself, my emotions, other people, situations. And that actually, if I'm honest, makes me feel successful and it has in some degree or to some degree in one way or another made me successful in my life. I might, you know, people look at me and they might think, wow, that person has achieved a lot, that person is successful. But the thing is, I feel that I've been going through life not making deep connections with people, friendships, you know, um, even family connections and relationships. I feel like I've been manipulating people. I've been manipulating relationships. And it's lonely. And it wasn't actually really until, you know, we met, we've been on this journey together that I've realized that's probably not appropriate. Um, it was just, how I've always done things, I was seeing success from it, and I have the kind of attitude sometimes of, well, you know, I'm, I'm just doing what needs to be done, and if, if other people are going with it, that's on them. Um, I've been pretty self-interested. Um, 
I am looking back at the past, I'm seeing the issues, but I will say I haven't completely released them, healed them, worked through them yet. I am still very much a person who likes to be in control, but I'm trying to do it in a productive, high vibrational way, and I am trying to, to consider others more, not just myself. And um, I'm doing all of this because I've been, you know, taking direction from you, I've been watching you, I've been admiring you, I've been seeing how you are kind and open-hearted, and while you set boundaries with people, you also actually care about other people. And Yes, that's very inspiring, but I, again, I'm going to be honest, I can see how far that gets you. I can see the benefit in that, and I am someone who's driven by goals and achieving and attainment. Um, so my motivations are still a little bit selfish. I know I'm not the easiest person to get along with, but I am very committed, very passionate, and once I'm loyal to someone, I will fight to the death for that person, and I am actually loyal to you in my heart space, even though I might not be showing it to you right now. And you might feel like I'm impenetrable, but I actually have lots and lots and lots of feelings. Some of them I have buried across the years, others I've never really connected with, and I'm having to dig them all up and, and reconnect with them and learn how to do this again. I am someone who is tempted by um, the darker things in life. Um, I like, I'm interested in the meaning of life. I'm interested in life after death. I'm interested in aliens, UFOs, ghosts, poltergeists, but I'm also interested and drawn to things that are pleasurable, but to points of excess sometimes. I like the finer things in life. Um, you know, good food. I like to go out. I like to have fun. I like to make money. I like to spend money. And I know that sometimes I get carried away with this. Sometimes I can be um, also too aggressive, too, um, too competitive, when maybe I don't need to be competitive, I can see everything as a challenge. Um, that's something I'm working on, but you do need to know essentially I am a competitive person. And I, I feel most excited, um, most powerful when I'm competing for things. And um, that's just me. <laughs> okay, so pile two, that's what I'm getting. This is someone who is kind of saying, look, I know I can take it too far sometimes, but essentially I'm very masculine. I don't I don't know if your person's a man or a woman, but they're very masculine, very driven by goals. And these could be goals other people can see. It could be goals they set inside their mind that they privately, quietly achieve and then tap themselves, you know, pat themselves on the back once they achieve that goal. But this is someone determined and focused. And once they decide on a person, they've decided on that person. Um, almost maybe even sometimes possibly to the point of, it could be, a, it could be obsessive a little bit. It could be like, let's say this is someone you're not actually interested in. This would almost be horrendous because they would be so fixated on you anyway. Um, you'd have a hard time sort of almost getting them away from you, getting them out of your energy. But yeah, this is a very, very dominant, domineering energy almost. Okay, so pile three, let's have a look and see what the channeled message is from your person. Oh, also pile two. I hope you haven't gone. Taurus came through here, just got that for some reason. Okay, pile three. Page of Pentacles reversed, our first, no, second reversal. Uh, Page of Pentacles reversed, Two of Pentacles, Four of Wands. Wow, this already feels very gentle, almost watery. I don't know if there's heavy water sign energy here. Um, this is someone who feels like they're full of self-doubt, if I'm honest. This is someone who does not see their worth. Wow, okay, let's get into this. So channeled message for pile three, please. Okay, the first thing, if I'm honest, pile through that I want to do is burp. I'm trying not to do it on the microphone, but there's something your person needs to, wants to say to you, and it can't come up. It's almost like they might think it sounds rude or they're taking too much of a liberty saying it to you or something. This is someone who minimizes themselves so much. Okay, channel message. I don't think I have enough for you. I don't know who you think I am. I don't know why you see me the way you see me. I feel like a page. I feel like I've I've got a few things. I'm a nice person. I'm pleasant. I do not think I have something of substance to offer you. I see you as an empress. I see you as an emperor. And you would only be disappointed in me. Um, I do a lot of fantasizing. I fantasize about us being married, having a home, having a family, having people around us we consider to be family, who celebrate with us, who are celebrating for us, who are happy. I feel like we could have the most amazing union. It would be based on a foundation of deep mutual respect and friendship, but 
it's so much in my head because I'm terrified at the thought of even trying to suggest this to you because even if you've expressed to me that you're interested in having this with me, it's, it's almost laughable to me because you obviously don't see who I am. I am not capable, I am not worthy of giving you everything here that I imagine and everything maybe you have imagined I'm capable of. I have an opportunity right now to speak to you but I don't even entirely know what to say, I just... I'm not sure I've got enough to offer you. Um, I have so I have so many feelings for you, that's true. I have, my heart is wide open for you. Sometimes if I seem flaky, if I pull out of plans, if I'm hesitant to make plans, it's not that I don't want to. I genuinely just feel that the practical side of things doesn't match up to the huge ocean of, of feelings I have. So I almost feel overwhelmed before I begin. Sometimes I feel, you know, I lean towards sort of almost giving up, giving up on myself, not giving up on you. Um, I think you're amazing, but I, I just can't picture us together because it would be like an emperor or an empress being with a page, a child, someone who is childlike. It, it wouldn't be equal as much as I would want it to. It wouldn't be equal. So for now, I just, I keep you in the realm of fantasy. I daydream about you so much. Um, You know, that's it, I think, pile three. Essentially, your person just sits and, and imagines daydreams they're in awe of you, but it's almost like they've checked out. They're not even entering the competition or the race. So they're not so much in grief, like, oh, I'm, I'm not good enough. It's more like, well, you're so out of my league that it would have been ridiculous for me to ever have seriously considered I could have a chance. So I never really have seriously considered it. And I'm happy to just be in amazement about you from a distance. So what I would say, <laughs> wow, I don't know how many people this is going to resonate with. Um, I kind of want to give you a person of, of a helpful, gentle kick up the bum, you know, to get them moving, to see more about, to help them see themselves a bit clearer. Um, what I will say with this is, if you're thinking mm, there's more to it than this, this person's got more up and go than this, I would, I well, I don't know, I don't know if, you can see the card so that's not very helpful now, but if you haven't looked at either one or two and you were feeling drawn, I would check out those messages as well, or even if the card the combinations are speaking to you, see one and two, because this could just be an aspect of your person, because what's so prevalent with that energy is there's a real vacancy, this person is checked out in terms of being there for themselves, but that's what they're presenting today. There's got to be more depth than this. This is not a fully rounded functioning human. This is not someone who can make their way through life on a day-to-day -day basis. So pile three, I'm going right back to the start when I needed to burp, when something needed to come out, some energy needed to come out. Your person is not telling you everything. They are not bringing everything to the table. Even today in this message, they're giving us the surface here. Um, so there's some reason that they're not going deeper. Um, but this is someone who's coming across as, it's almost like the ocean, we're looking at the surface and they're saying, well, that's all there is, never mind, no, there's a whole ocean with with so many creatures that down there, some we know of, some we don't, we, like what's going on beneath, um, but this person's not bringing that today, so if you want more depth, maybe check out one of these, but um, yeah, if you're feeling like that can't be all there is, I agree with you, and um, maybe time will bring more to the surface here. It could, you know, it, it could be like a trauma response, it could, um, I don't want to go too deep, I don't know this person, you know, <laughs> who am I to say, but it just doesn't feel, well, there's something that feels a bit off about it, like this is, it's almost like this is a, um, <clears throat> a construct that they're pushing out, this is, let me use, I, I read a book years ago about um, the different archetypes in Western society that women can find themselves funneled into if they're not sort of consciously mindful. For example, the eternal girl, you know, if you're um, <clears throat> too competent, too capable, you scare off other people and men won't be interested in all of that. So you feign a degree of helplessness that you don't actually feel. You pretend you're less intelligent or switched on or capable than you are. You know, that sort of thing. 
I feel like this person is doing something like that. It might not be that exact thing, but it's almost like I've constructed an image consciously or unconsciously. Maybe it's a bit of both because I, I've learned or I feel that's what's safe, that's what's accepted, that's what's getting me places and I'm pushing it out there. So I don't know if they're aware of it or if they need to go on a journey to really connect with who they actually are and then they can bring that person to you. But they're, we're scratching the surface here. That's funny because in comparison to part two, part two is like, this is who I am, <laughs> take it or leave it. Um, okay, so there we go. So I hope this has been helpful. Um, thank you so much for watching and hopefully I will see you soon. Bye.